Oh, hello. I'm an evil scientist. Well, that's what my friend, the Michael Myers fanatic, keeps telling me I look like anyway, so I figured I'd play it up. Plus, it ties in well to the Mimic trilogy. Oh. Um, nurse, get that man the vaccine for whatever was in that syringe. The Mimic Trilogy. Very much about science. Scientists like myself play around with genetics and create massive bugs, at least the size of men and a little bit larger still. They do this mainly for fun and because they can. Well, okay, not really, it's for a cure, but the whole point of the first film is clearly that we shouldn't do something just because we can. This has been confirmed by director Guillermo del Toro, a Catholic, and also a big fan of gooey, nasty, slimy stuff. Although I'm sure there's no correlation between the two. So, starting with the first mimic. Cockroach is carrying a deadly disease, threatening to take away an entire generation of children in New York. Force the hand of scientists. They find themselves perceiving the only solution as being to genetically modify some bugs. They call these the Judas breed, and they are meant to destroy the cockroaches carrying the disease, and then die, not breed. However, something goes wrong, and here we are. Big, giant bugs. A lot of people criticize the movie for its similarity to the first two Alien movies, and in general, it isn't terribly original. I don't think there's a lot of room for originality in the creature feature subgenre. And then there's the complaint that the movie is quite slow paced. It takes about half the movie to get going, and it spends much of this time introducing secondary characters, not main characters, including the incredibly irritating autistic spoon kid. Because it takes so damn long to get going, we end up with a rushed climax. And while the climax itself is relatively exciting, it's also far too easy. You know, when someone conquers something really big and threatening really easily, it doesn't make us react positively, usually. It makes us think, okay, that was lame. And it kind of is, in this case. The acting ranges, including Lisa Kudrow's performance. I would say she does better in stuff like human trafficking. She can sort of act. The characters are perhaps also a bit hit and miss. I think it's typical for Guillermo del Toro to make characters that you not necessarily really like, but they do sort of stand out. Now, the movie was taken away from him, and he has since disowned it, because they changed so damn much of it. And with that said, you can still recognize his excellent touches here and there. We can't necessarily explain why these bugs got so big when they were specifically genetically designed to die and to not be able to breed. And that's kind of the idea, if you ask me. Science can make us overconfident at times. We get to thinking that we can understand everything and control everything. And the bugs in this movie are trying to tell us we can't, and if we mess around too much with stuff, it's gonna bite us in the ass, or in the head. It's gonna attack us with big claws. And from a technical standpoint, this film really does have something to offer. The lighting, the camera work, the effects brought to us by Rob Bottin, among others, who earlier gave us The Thing. 
there are a lot of cliches and largely it's predictable, but it does also break some rules. So at times you don't quite know what's going to happen. Moving on to Mimic 2. Please don't ask me what that is. I'm not sure that actually happens in the movie. This one follows Remy from the original. I actually had to look this up, and I only found out after watching the movie. I just could not recognize her at all. Anyway, she's a teacher teaching children about bugs, of course. What else? And she finds herself chased by the giant Judas Breed bugs. This one is much more of a direct monster flick creature feature. Where the first one took itself quite seriously, this one just goes for the cheese and has a much faster pace. We're already in direct-to-video territory and the film is only about 80 minutes long. In spite of the fast pace, I personally found myself quite bored with it. I think part of the problem is that our lead, Remy, is impossible for us to relate to. She's just too damn weird and socially awkward. I mean, yes, she was a little bit off in the first one, which might be why she worked well as not the lead, you know. Okay, Lisa Kudrow as babe scientist, maybe a little bit too much, but here they just make her really strange, and one of the things in the film is how she keeps getting dates with the wrong guys. How is she getting dates at all? We see some of one of her dates, and apparently all she does is talk bugs. And not the bunny either, because that would at least be slightly less bizarre. Anyway, this one introduces a ton of characters, and most of them turn out to basically just be fodder. This isn't a secret. Several characters in, let's say, the first 20 minutes are introduced and killed off right after. I don't think we're supposed to care. It's just, you know, if you want to see giant bugs killing people, this is your movie. And, I mean, the characters who are the main characters, other than the scientist, we have a black kid who wants to hurt people who are happy, a drunk teenager, and a detective who's kind of a jerk. Okay, I'll grant you that having a kid portrayed as someone with destructive tendencies is slightly gutsy, but other than that, how are we supposed to care about these people? This tries to mimic the first in the Long John appearance, and it fails to be tense, mysterious, or even a little bit interesting. There is no atmosphere built in this film. There is next to no character logic in this movie, or logic in general. And I'm sure that has nothing to do with the fact that this was written by the same man who gave us Hollow Man 2 and Dracula 2000, among others. Those are the ones I've seen, and I don't intend to add to that list. The practical effects and production values of this are decent enough. The CGI and its interaction with the live-action elements is pitiful. The attempts at comedy are lame and powerfully unfunny. So, moving on to Mimic 3, Sentinel. And please don't ask me who the fuck the Sentinel is, because I have no clue. I don't know, the photographer maybe? Don't ask. One of the kids who survived Strickler has now grown up. Physically, at least. 24-year-old Marvin stays in his room with plastic near the door so as to keep out everything because he's hypersensitive. He's allergic to just about everything. He spends his time taking pictures of the neighbors in his area and at this point James Stewart starts to wonder if he's actually seen a murder and Grace Kelly, yeah, you know what I mean. This is rear window with giant cockroaches. No joke, that's what it is. That's what it was pitched at, apparently. And the director, who I might add seems to be an interesting guy, I would keep an eye on JT Petty for future projects. 
took this idea and ran with it. Unfortunately, we don't get the commentary on voyeurism in everybody, all people, nor on good neighboring that Hitchcock gave us in his masterpiece half a century ago. And the whole thing with him being stuck behind the camera, at times it works, but at other times it just feels annoying, where it should make us feel powerless, it just makes us, you know, almost yell at the screen, just leave your room. Hitchcock pulled this off with James Stewart, but here it just doesn't work quite as well. It feels like him being trapped in the room prevents the action. What does kind of work is the gradual pace. This movie is only 70 minutes long, and it still takes its time to build up. Thus, we really don't get very much action until the last 10 minutes or so, and when that happens, there's really no setup. It kind of comes out of nowhere. And the climax itself, it's pretty good. But then the movie doesn't end so much as just stop. I mean, it's like as if I was doing this review and suddenly I just stopped in the middle of a sentence or even in the middle of a word and rolled credits, you know? This one is not for everyone. It appears that either you love this one or you hate it. Well, I guess if you had to place me, I was more in the love, but I don't quite fawn over it. I just respect it for the technical aspects, which are pretty damn excellent. The sound design and the timing is spot on. Every scare really works in this one. Most things are just hinted at, like we might see the aftermath of a bug attack. And we have to use our imagination. The lighting is great, there's a lot of very dark shots where we just get little hints of what we might be seeing. Honestly, I found this quite gripping. I was constantly watching the screen trying to pick out, did I see something there? The paranormal activity kind of effect. Granted, the rear window thing is a little more than a gimmick, but anyway, other people will hate it. This isn't your average creature feature. If you want big bugs attacking people constantly, watch the second movie. Know what you're getting into before you watch this movie, you know? Marvin himself is a fairly weak character, you know, physically and mentally. We also have his sister, who's really energetic and enthusiastic. I personally found her cute, and I really sympathized with Marvin's position, but other people have said that they really couldn't stand them. Again, matter of taste. There aren't very many characters in this one, and they're all developed, so when there's peril, you care. There isn't an awful lot of dialogue. The acting is pretty good, certainly for a direct-to-video sequel. The CGI doesn't entirely hold up, and we do eventually get to see too much of these bugs, but the practical effects really hold up, other than maybe one really obvious guy in a suit moment, but frankly, I was so into the movie at that point, I barely cared. This one has moments of cheese, and the director has apparently said that it's really a comedy. Anyway, those were my spoiler-free reviews of the Mimic Trilogy. This has been a look at the series. I hope you enjoyed it. I will see you next time. You know, the paranormal effect. The porn...